डोंट से यू डोंट हैव इनफ टाइम डोंट से यू डोंट हैव इनफ टाइम यू हैव बीन प्रोवाइडेड विद द सेम नंबर ऑफ आवर्स पर डे एज गिवन टू हेलेन किलर एल्बर्ट आइंस्टाइन लियोनार्डो डाविंसी पास्टर मदर टेरेसा yes my shimmering stars so it only depends on how you manage your time how you prioritize your goals so my question to you all is do you uh, make a daily schedule of yourself or do you set some certain goals that you have to fulfill for each and every day if not yet students then start doing it from now because that will help you in order to gain consistency in order to be punctual and it will lead you towards your main goal towards your uh, you know aim in life so do make certain goals write it down on a sheet of paper or in your notebooks that you have to do the very next day right so now today i shorya grover welcome you all to this amazing platform of pw english and we are going to start with our lecture number 2 based on the chapter p block elements under our batch excellence batch i hope so the previous lecture was clear to you and you were able to understand all the concepts with regard to the general characteristics of the group 15 elements and now you are clear with what are p block elements okay and you were able to learn the physical properties also and you will able to understand the chemical properties as well so we ended up with the chemical properties and we initially started with the oxidation number topic that was the last topic of the previous lecture so today we shall be proceeding from that topic towards the next one so let us start let us see that what are the topics we are going to cover in today's lecture so just write it over here topics to be covered so that it will create uh, an image in your mind that how we are going to proceed in today's lecture the very first thing that we are going to do today is basically the chemical properties is basically the chemical properties of group 15 that were left over that means the reactivity towards hydrogen the reactivity towards oxygen the reactivity uh, reactivity with metals so first of all we are going to cover that properties and then we are going to proceed further to the compounds related to nitrogen then we are going to see the compounds related to nitrogen now we are going to see about dinitrogen about ammonia about nitric oxide we will be seeing its preparation physical property chemical property over here under this topic so let us start initially with our very first topic that is going to be the chemical properties and the trends first of all let us revise the last topic that we did in the previous lecture that was about oxidation state that was about oxidation state so students if i ask you about oxidation state what was the uh, the general or i would say the common oxidation state that the group 15 elements hold over here so it was plus 3 minus 3 and plus 5 this was the general oxidation state that group number 15 elements hold on now if i ask you that what are the elements of group 15 now it it is a kind of a revision section so you need to write it down by your own right now what are the elements elements are nitrogen phosphorus arsenic antimony and bismuth am i right yes so if i ask you the very first trend over here that when you move from top to bottom what will be the effect on metallic character my question is what will be the effect on metallic character now students if you remember in the previous lecture before starting the lecture before starting our very first session for the excellence batch i told you that you have to follow the five major um tips i would say or i said you that you have to promise me down that we will be following these five basic tips that you have told us today so the very first one was to understand the topic that you are being taught over here and you shall be provided with a certain amount of time to write it down the second one was about i have given you about the ncert lines the third one was about to solve the homework questions given in the uh, in the session itself fourth one was about the practice session and the fifth one was about the revision i hope so you remember these five basic points that i told you now this was your promise to me that you have done that and the very fifth one was the revision so i want you all to it is a kind of a revision see i have taken the last topic and i am asking you what is the metallic character if you don't know students that means you have not revised the topic so kindly revise the topic first of all because see i will be teaching you you shall be understanding but before but if you are not doing any kind of revision you will forget it out 
after a week you will not remember it because you have not revised it so revision is really very essential because exams are approaching and without revision you will be forgetting each and every topic okay so do revise each topic after looking to the video whenever you complete all your videos set some time that half an hour i have to do this subject half an hour this subject then half an hour for the question sake by this way you can assemble your goals by this way you can assemble your timetable now coming back to my topic i am asking you what is the metallic character trend over here so metallic character basically increases down the group now what happens we know that nitrogen phosphorus both are non metals right after that i told you arsenic and antimony they both are metalloids while if i talk about bismuth it is a metal so what is happening over here the characteristics are moving from non metal metalloids and then coming towards metal that means the metallic character is being increasing over here okay what was the other element after bismuth the other element was moscovium if you remember it right it was also a metal that was radioactive clear so this was the the thing that we did in the previous lecture now in the previous lecture as well i asked you one more concept over here that was the stability of that was the stability of plus 5 oxidation state so kindly tell me what is the stability of plus 5 oxidation state so what will be your answer does the stability of plus 5 oxidation state increases or it decreases down the group so your answer will be that the stability of the plus 5 oxidation state ma'am it decreases down the group why does it decreases down the group students and what was the reason behind it i will tell you again if i ask you what is the stability of if i ask you what is the stability of plus 3 oxidation state so what will your answer it will be it will increase down the group the reason behind this is due to inert pair effect yes this we did in the previous lecture this is due to due to inert pair effect now what was the inert pair effect students what was the inert pair effect this i have told you in the previous lecture that was the reluctance of the 2s electrons in order to that they can't participate in bonding the reluctance of the 2s electrons so that they cannot participate in bonding is referred to as inert pair effect and so the elements that were present you know at the bottom of the group they only shows plus 3 oxidation state and they were stable in plus 3 not in the plus 5 one because the 2s electrons that were present inside they were exhibiting the inert pair effect do you remember it right so this was all about the topic that we did in the previous lecture we ended up with this topic now we shall be starting with the chemical properties and the very first chemical property is reactivity with hydrogen so when i talk with reactivity with hydrogen what are the compounds being formed with group 15 elements so the compounds being formed over here is nh3 ph3 ash3 sbh3 and bih3 these are the compounds that are being formed when the group 15 elements they react with hydrogen now my question over here from you all is uh, before okay before asking question let me tell you about their smell or i would say the odor if i talk about nh3 my dear students it has a pungent odor it has a pungent odor when i talk about ph3 basically it has a rotten fish like smell it has a rotten fish like smell and when i talk about ash3 sbh3 bih3 they have an offensive odor okay so this was about the odor i would say or about the smell i would say now if i ask you what is the hybridization of the central metal atom over here the hybridization again how we are going to check it out we know that basically they are forming three bonds with hydrogen and they have one lone pair of electron that means here three bond pair is present and one lone pair is present that means the sum is 4 and for 4 the hybridization is sp3 now students what happens over here as they exhibit lone pair of electrons over them so their shape becomes pyramidal so if i have to draw the structure for them the shape becomes a pyramidal why it becomes pyramidal even after having sp3 hybridization why the shapes become pyramidal the reason behind over here is they are pyramidal due to the presence of lone pair of electrons now what happens if i have to draw the shape of nh3 it will look like this these are the lone pair of electrons and these are the three bonds that are being made with hydrogen now what happens over here is students their angle should have been 109 degree 28 minutes but what happens over here is due to the presence of these lone pair electrons there shall be the repulsion between the lone pair and the bond pair 
and between the bond pair and the bond pair due to which what happens their angle becomes 107 degree instead of 109 degree 28 minutes so the bond angle over here in the case of nh3 it becomes out to be 107 degree and the shape for them is pyramidal now my question to you all is if i move if i see the trend over here with respect to the compounds being formed with hydrogen my very first question from you all is when you move down the group what will be the effect on bond angle now i have told you the bond angle for nh3 that is 107 degree i am asking you what will be the trend of bond angle will the bond angle while moving from top to bottom will increase or it will decrease my question is that very simple question so let me tell you my dear students if i talk about bond angle over here if i talk about bond angle do you should know this thing that bond angle basically bond angle basically is inversely proportional to the size of the central atom now what is the central atom over here central atom is nitrogen phosphorus arsenic antimony bismuth and you know that you know this basic thing that when you move top to bottom the size increases why does the size increases because the number of shells increases when we talk about when we talk about the central metal atom so now when size is being increases as we are moving down the group of the central metal atom that means of nitrogen phosphorus arsenic antimony bismuth what will be the effect on bond angle I told you over here, bond angle is inversely proportional to the size of central metal atom. If size is being increased, that means bond angle will what? It will decrease. So when you move down the group, bond angle decreases due to increase in the size of the central metal atom. Is that clear? Okay, I am giving you one minute to kindly write it down. Then I will be asking you the next trend over here. I am giving you a minute to write it down. Now comes the next trend. If I ask you what is the trend for bond length? What is the trend for bond length over here? So what will be your answer? See when I talk about bond length, how I am talking about bond length? See, in the initial these uh, state I would say, the atom is small in size and so the bond length will be small because the atoms are close to each other. As you know, when you move down the group, the central metal atom size increases. Nitrogen, phosphorus, arsenic, antimony, bismuth. As you move down the group, the size increases because shells are being increased. So, as size of the central metal atom is being increased, hence I can say the bond length increases. The distance between the two atom increases due to increase in the size of the central metal atom. So, what happens? The bond length increases when you move down the group because the size is increasing. The bond length here, it increases. If I write over here about bond length, so bond length increases. Increases, I have written this sign. Bond length increases down the group. Is it clear to you? Is it clear to you students? Now, what is my next question over here? That is bond dissociation energy. Bond dissociation energy. What is the order for bond dissociation energy when you move from top to bottom? Now, what is bond dissociation energy? Bond dissociation energy is the amount of energy that is required in order to break the bond. This is what is bond dissociation energy. So, when you move down the group, what happens over here? If I ask you all, what will happen over here? As you know, in the above ones, they, the atoms are small in size, hence it is close to the central metal atom. But when you are moving down the group, you have been seeing that yes, bond length increases, hence they are at a some distance from each other. You have to break a bond. Which bond will be easily to be broken up? The one which are present close to each other or one which are which are at a little distance from each other. Obviously, which are, let, which are at a little distance from each other that will be easily broken up because you will provide only very less amount of energy. But the ones which are so close to each other, you have to give them some certain amount of energy in order to break them because they shall be, uh, you know, putting in force on each other. They shall be having some kind of attraction between each other. So, you have to provide some certain amount of energy in order to break that bond which are close to each other rather than the one which are a move... Which are at a far distance from each other so bond dissociation energy basically decreases why it decreases because the initial ones are small in size hence they are close to each other and you have to provide a very uh, a very major amount of energy in order to break them because they are very close to each other but when you move down the group they are at a far most distance so you will give a little amount of energy and they will be broken up very easily now comes the next order over here that is about thermal stability what will happen to thermal stability? 
Now, thermal stability is quite related with the bond dissociation energy only. Thermal stability is basically the amount of heat that is required in order to break a bond. Again, I would say in these cases, what is happening? As they are small in size, they are close to each other. So, you will be providing some certain amount of heat in order to break that bond. And if I talk about the, the lower ones, they are at a distance from each other because the bond length is increased. They have a larger size. Hence, you will provide a very little amount of heat and they will break easily. So, what happens? Here, you require more thermal stability in comparison to these one because here you require more heat to break, break the bond in comparison to these ones. So, thermal stability also decreases. What is the order for thermal stability? It will also decrease. Now comes the question that is generally asked. Now, these are also asked but there is one more question that they can ask you over here is about the basic character is about the basic character. So, students basic character basically what happens? It also decreases down the group when I talk over here. Why it decreases down the group? Because the C electron density decreases. As size increases, electron density decreases. So, donation decreases. And you know that the tendency to donate electrons is what is basic character. So, basic character also decreases. Now, the very most important thing that they can ask you in the questions as well that is about the reducing character. About what? About reducing character. So, what will be the effect on the reducing character? Will it increase or decrease? So, now reducing character basically depends directly upon ease of losing hydrogen. It directly depends upon ease of losing hydrogen. So, you know basically what happens over here. The lower ones as they have the more bond length. Right, So, they can easily give hydrogen, easily lose hydrogen because they are at a far more distance, hence the force of attraction is less. But over here, if I talk about the upper one elements, they are close to each other. Hence, they are exhibiting some kind of forces. Right, So, they won't be easily, you know, lose hydrogen in comparison to the lower ones. So, here they can easily lose hydrogen because bond length is more. Hence, we can say the reducing character basically, it will increase. It increases. Because they can easily lose hydrogen while they don't easily lose hydrogen. Is that clear to you students? I guess this is clear to you. Now one more thing. Thermal stability is inversely proportional to bond strength. This is also one more order that you need to remember. Thermal stability is inversely proportional to bond strength. So if they ask you about bond strength, you can initially tell their order as well. You can also tell their order as well. Is it clear to you students? Okay. <clears throat> I will give you a minute to write it down because there is one more order with respect to I would say the boiling point of these. So that is important one that we have to do. Kindly write it down. I am giving you a minute to write it down. Kindly do it. Okay students. Now when I am talking with. Uh, okay. Let us make space over here. Okay I will do over here. Okay, over here I am just completing about the, over here I am just completing about the reactivity with hydrogen's last topic. See, when I ask you about reactivity with hydrogen, what will be the order for, order for boiling point? This is quite important as well. If I ask you about the order of boiling point, what will happen over here? You should know that boiling point depends upon the two basic factors. Now, this thing I have already told you in the previous lecture as well. That boiling point depends basically majorly on the two factors. Number one is the molecular mass or the molecular weight, I would say. The second factor, it depends directly upon the wonderful forces of attraction about the Van der Waal forces of attraction. So, what happens as you move down the group, the mass basically increases. Hence, I can say the boiling point will increase. So, what will be your order? You will think that the order comes out to be this. You shall be thinking that the order would come out to be this. Right? Because it directly depends upon the molecular mass. So, you will be thinking it is this, but it is incorrect. This is incorrect. Why? I will tell you. What is the order? What is the correct order for this? Correct order is pH 3. Now listen to this very carefully because it is generally asked. Then comes ASH 3. Then comes NH 3. Then comes SBH 3. And greater is of BIH 3. 
so this is the correct order now if you compare both of these orders what is the difference that you shall ob uh, observe over here that nh3 has more boiling point in comparison to ph3 and ash3 hence it comes here in front in between them why it is because why because it is due to the hydrogen bond in nh3 why because due to hydrogen bonding and which kind of hydrogen bonding intermolecular hydrogen bonding so sorry intramolecular hydrogen bonding that's why they have more boiling point in comparison to ph3 and ash3 so this is the correct order for the boiling point that you need to remember with regard to the reactivity with hydrogen kindly write it down and put a star mark over here because it is a kind of exception for nh3 over here that you need to remember if you are using this that it is directly proportional molecular mass you shall be writing this one but this is incorrect this is the correct order is it clear to you <clears throat> yes okay now students now we shall proceed towards the reactivity with oxygen while the group 15 elements making a bond with oxygen they form two kinds of bond over here let us say that all the elements we represented with e elements are represented with e and we know oxygen is represented with o now elements e can have two oxidation state either plus 3 or plus 5 when it combines with oxygen and oxygen has an oxidation state of minus 2 right now if i make a bond with the very first oxidation state let us say e has an oxidation state of plus 3 and o we know has an oxidation state of minus 2 so its charge will go on its you know uh, base and its charge will go in its base so what will happen e will have in charge of oxygen and o will have in charge of e that is e2o3 so the first compound that is obtained when the group 15 elements react with oxygen having oxidation state plus 3 is e2o3 kind of compound is being obtained over here is which one is e2o3 now the next kind is if e has an oxidation state of plus 5 and again oxygen as of minus 2 so its charge will go on its base and its charge will come on its base so what will happen e will have oxidation number of o and oxygen will have 5 so the second uh, you know type of compounds that are obtained when the elements group 15 elements react with oxygen comes out to be e2o5 so these are the two kinds of compounds that are being obtained from here that is e2o3 and e2o5 is it clear to you I guess this is clear to you. Now, one more thing, let me tell you, the metal oxides are generally basic. This is the very important thing that you need to know that metal oxides, they are generally basic. They are generally, I'm not saying all are basic, they are generally basic. Then if I talk about the non-metal oxides, they are generally acidic they are generally acidic is it clear to you now when i talk about the compounds being formed from e2o3 let us talk about compounds being formed from e2o3 first of all it will be what it will be n2o3 it will be what it will be p2o3 it will be what as2o3 it will be what sb2o3 it will be what bi2o3 right these are the compounds that are being formed now you should know this thing that basically if i talk about nitrogen and phosphorus if i talk about n2o3 over here i know that uh, nitrogen and phosphorus are non-metal so the excites formed by non-metal will be acidic in nature hence they both are acidic in nature we know that they both are metalloids we know that they both are metalloids. That means they have both the characteristics of metals and non-metals. So, they both are amphoteric in nature. That means they can act as an acid as well as base also. Amphoteric in nature. Now, if I talk about bismuth, I know it is a metal. So, the oxide formed by bismuth is Bi2O3. So, oxide by metal is generally basic. So, this is generally basic. Is it clear? So, this is one question that they generally ask you over here. Is it clear to you, my dear students? Shall we proceed further? Yes, shall we proceed further? <coughs> this was about the reactivity with oxygen, towards oxygen. Is it clear? Okay. Now we shall move to the next topic that is the reactivity towards halogen. If I talk about with halogen, again two kinds of you know compounds will be formed over here. Now what are the ki kinds of compounds being formed over here? We are going to take elements as E and we know halogen is represented by X. Halogen has an oxidation state of minus 1. Again we know the elements generally when they are forming bonds with halogen, they can either have a plus 3 oxidation state or a plus 5 oxidation state. Again we are going to do in the similar manner. 
if e has a plus 3 oxidation state and it is being bonded with halogen as we know halogen has a minus 1 oxidation state so what kind of compounds will be formed its charge will go on its base its charge will go on its base so it will be e will have a charge of x and x will have a charge of e that is ex3 will be obtained now the second one if e has the oxidation state of plus 5 and halogen has an oxidation state of minus 1 so what shall we obtain over here we shall be obtain e will have a charge of x and x will have a charge of Five over here. X is halogen. Halogen can be fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. All of these stuff. What it can be? X over here can be fluorine. It can be chlorine. It can be bromine. It can be iodine. Is it clear to you? Now, when we say that when it is showing a reactivity with halogen, it will form two kinds of compounds. One is EX three. Another one is EX five. Is it clear to you? One is EX three. Another one is EX five. now what happens it is very very most important thing see if we are talking about uh, you know they are forming compounds with the plus 3 oxidation state that means ex3 will be made so what kind of compounds will be formed it will be nx3 it will be px3 it will be asx3 it will be sbx3 it will be bix3 right if i talk about ex5 compound so let me tell you nitrogen does not form any compound here nx5 will not be obtained why it will not be obtained because there is no d orbital no d orbital so so nx5 is not obtained it is not obtained because there is no d orbital again here px5 can be seen here asx5 can be seen again here sbx5 does not exist means it can exist but it further reacts it further reacts with oxygen forming sbox so you can see as sbx5 but it is unstable in nature and you shall be seeing sbox over here okay and again here bix5 is there but it will be not stable again it why it will not be stable because we know that at the lower stages plus 3 oxidation state stability is more in comparison to the plus 5 oxidation state again here we can see bix also is being seen over here okay so these two are unstable why because plus 3 oxidation state is more stable in comparison to the plus 5 as we move down the group is it clear to you students i guess this is now clear to you now uh, other than this they can ask you a general question you know with regard to the covalent character will ex3 or ex5 which will have more covalent character pentahalides or trihalides which will have more covalent character over here this is my question so pentahalides have more covalent character over here why they have more covalent character over here this you need to uh, see over here what is the oxidation state in both of these cases if i talk about the oxidation state over here for e is plus 5 over here if i talk if it is plus 3 oxidation state so if i talk about plus 5 oxidation state here is polarizing power is more in comparison to this here polarizing power is more so here we can say that covalent character is more is it clear to you uh, students i guess this is now clear to you one more thing that i need to you know uh, tell over here when we talk about nx3 in that case when i am forming compounds i am saying nx3 when i am forming compounds over here basically it will be what nf3 ncl3 nbr3 ni3 these are the compounds that we see over here so when i talk about nf3 it is the only one which is stable the rest are unstable nf3 is the only one that is stable the rest are unstable in nature why the nf3 is only stable because it it uh, because over here they have small size that's why that's why it is more stable in comparison to the other ones that's why it is more stable in comparison to the another one and if i talk about the another one for example if i talk about ncl3 nbr3 ni3 they are explosive in nature so this is all about the reactivity towards halogen that you need to remember it is all about the reactivity towards halogen now we shall proceed towards the next and the last chemical property that we have is the reactivity towards metals now it is very most very much easy i would say 
if i talk about you know we are talking about the nitrogen family so let us take first example of nitrogen only when i am talk with metal let us say i am talking about calcium i know calcium is an oxidation state of plus 2 when it basically reacts with nitrogen that is n2 now i know that nitrogen basically exist in the form now when i am talking about nitrogen over here which kind of you know compound will be obtain over here so you should know that calcium basically has a plus 3 oxidation state and nitrogen basically now over here this is very 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 essential thing that you you are forming over here sorry calcium over here is having plus 2 oxidation state as you know and nitrogen has plus 3 oxidation state so what will happen over here calcium charge will be uh, calcium will have a 3 at a base the charge of nitrogen and nitrogen will have its charge so here ca3n2 will be formed so this is basically the reactivity towards what reactivity towards metal now you can balance it out here there are three calcium so you shall be putting three over here here two nitrogen so two, two so it is balanced out so this is all about the reactivity towards metal that you need to remember is it clear to you my dear students shall we proceed further now students this was all about the chemical properties we have finished with the chemical properties initially i started with the oxidation state that was the topic from the previous lecture then we proceeded further towards the reactivity with hydrogen after that we did react with this order of boiling point and then we proceeded towards the reactivity towards oxygen then we did reactivity towards halogen and the last we did the reactivity towards metal now we shall start with the compounds related to the nitrogen and the very first compound that we are going to start today is dinitrogen di nitrogen is basically n2 what it is basically it is n2 now how to prepare di nitrogen di nitrogen can be prepared commercially also so first of all we are going to prepare di nitrogen commercially so commercially it can be pre prepared by liquefaction and the purification of air liquid sorry liquid liquefaction and the fractional distillation of air so you can write over here commercially commercially di nitrogen that is n2 is obtained is obtained by liquefaction and fractional distillation of air liquefaction followed by fractional distillation of air now let me tell you how it is possible first of all we take an air now what will happen over here when we compress the air now understand this very carefully when we compress the air and cool it down below 0 degree celsius when air is compressed and cooled at 0 degree celsius this is the initial step you took air you have compressed it at 0 degree celsius now water vapors that are present in the air gets removed in the form of ice this is what happen when you cool at 0 degree celsius what happen over here water vapors water vapors that are that are present in air cools down and forms forms ice they are released in the form of ice they are removed in the form of ice you can say removed in the form of ice now after that what happens now again you will compress it and you will cool it at a uh, you know at a temperature below minus 78 degrees celsius something what will happen now see initially you compressed it and the water vapors in the form of ice was removed from there now again you are compressing and and cooling it down below minus 78 degree celsius something so you shall be seeing that the co2 removes in the form of dry ice now the next step is co2 is removed in the form of in the form of dry ice right my dear students that is that means in the form of solid co2 now what happen again you will cool it down again you will compress it down now here you will cool and compress at minus 200 degree celsius compress and cool at min below minus 200 degree celsius now what will be your initial step over here you shall be seeing that the air contains basically n2 nitrogen argon okay and it shall be containing oxygen so what you will be doing fractional distillation over here 
what happens when you are compressing and co2 is removed you are getting air in the liquid form now you will be doing fractional distillation air when present in liquid form you shall be doing fractional distillation initially what you did initially you liquefied it and now you are doing fractional distillation when you are doing fractional disti distillation first of all n2 will be the one that will escape n2 escapes first the very first to escape is n2 and it escapes at about minus 9 uh, 196 degrees celsius something after that students argon will uh, you know argon will uh, uh, escape and then oxygen will escape so by this way by this way you can do the preparation of n2 that is how is n2 escaped over here that means how is n2 produced over here so this was the commercial production of n2 how it is produced first initially we did liquefaction after that we did fractional distillation and we obtained n2 over here is it clear to you now students uh, there are some lines from the ncrt that i have taken the same lines that i have told you so you can either open up your ncrts in order to write it over there it will be easy for you Dinitrogen is produced commercially by the liquefaction and the fractional distillation of air. This I have already told you. Dinitrogen distills out first, leaving behind the oxygen. Now, this I have told you. No? Initially, N2 will escape out. This is what is written over here. Now, this is very important. This is the laboratory manner. This was the commercial manner of obtaining dinitrogen. Now comes the laboratory manner. What it says in laboratory, dinitrogen is prepared by treating an aqueous solution of ammonium chloride. Now you are treating this aqueous solution of ammonium chloride with sodium nitrate with NaNO2. What you shall be obtaining? You shall be obtaining N2. So this is the laboratory method. This is the lab method. And if you want to prepare commercially, so commercial method, I've already told you that how N2 is escaping. This is the laboratory method. So you, you should remember this thing that what you are taking over here, you are taking a solution of ammonium chloride and you are treating it with sodium nitrite and you are obtaining your product, right? Now what happens, you know, while this particular reaction, you shall be seeing that there are some impurities, there are some impurities while impurities while preparing while preparing N2, you shall obtain some impurities. Now you have to remove that impurities also. Now read the next line. Some amount of NO and HNO3 are also formed in this reaction. If you see in this particular reaction when N2 is being formed, what will happen? You will be seeing that very, very small amount of NO and HNO3 are uh, obtained and these are impurities. These impurities can be removed. Now, this is very important key point that while you are preparing in laboratory method, you are seeing that some kind of impurities are being arised. How to remove that impurities? See, they said that you have to pass the gas through aqueous sulfuric acid over here and then which contains potassium dichromate. Do remember this. Potassium dichromate is what? It is K2Cr2O7. This is potassium dichromate. It can also be obtained by thermal decomposition. Now, this is the next step of method of preparation for uh, nitrogen. That is by thermal decomposition. By thermal decomposition, you can also prepare this heat is written on the arrow. So, when you will do the thermal decomposition of ammonium dichromate, you shall be obtaining N2 over here. This is the procedure for obtaining the uh, nitrogen with thermal decomposition. Do remember this basically has an orange color. This basically has an orange color over here. Is it clear to you? Now comes the question that are generally asked in your examination. This is very, 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 very important because this steps explain us how to obtain pure nitrogen directly. So to obtain very pure nitrogen, you can obtain it by thermal decomposition of sodium or barium azide. Now what is sodium or barium azide? It is, it is this Ba N3 twice because you know barium has a plus 2 oxidation state so it comes down over here. And N3 has a minus because it is azide. What happens over here? Barium has a plus 2 oxidation state. And N3 as it is azide has a minus 1 oxidation state. So the charges will go on its base. So what we will be having? Ba1 and N3 twice. This is barium azide. So basically when you will heat the barium azide, you shall be obtaining the purest form of nitrogen. The purest form of nitrogen. Similarly, if you want to, you know, do the thermal decomposition of sodium azide. Now, what is sodium azide? It is NaN3. When you will be heating sodium azide, you will be directly obtaining what? You will be directly obtaining pure nitrogen as well as sodium will be released. Again, how this came over here, you should know sodium has a plus 1 oxidation state and azide N3 has a minus 1. So, what happens over here? It will be NaN3. 
सो आइदर यू आर हीटिंग बेरियम अजाइट और यू आर हीटिंग सोडियम अजाइट यू आर ऑप्टेनिंग अ प्योर नाइट्रोजन ओवर हेयर विच इज वेरी 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 इंपॉर्टेंट सो दिस दीज मेथड विच आई एम राइटिंग वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट यू हैव टू लर्न इट डाउन दिस वॉज द कमर्शियल मैथड दिस वॉज द लेबोरेटरी मैथड इन दिस लेबोरेटरी मैथड देवर सम इंप्योरिटीज आफ्टर दिस दिस इज द थर्मल डीकम्पोजिशन मैथड इन विच वेरी प्योर नाइट्रोजन कैन बी ऑप्टेन फ्रॉम बेरियम अजाइड एंड फ्रॉम सोडियम अजाइड इज इट क्लियर now come students the physical properties but before that i want you all to write it down till then i'll drink a glass of water please kindly write it down <coughs> okay so shall we proceed further now see now comes the physical properties let me tell you they are basically colorless if i talk about dinitrogen it is colorless it is odorless it doesn't have any smell it is tasteless this is i am talking about dinitrogen basically do remember this colorless odorless it is non toxic gas one more important thing it is a non toxic gas a non toxic gas now when i talk about basically the freezing point so it has a very low freezing point and boiling point as well so the very low freezing point very low freezing point and boiling point it has a very low freezing point and boiling point as well is it clear to you students okay and it is very less solubility it has a very less solubility in water as well so very less solubility or very low solubility in water in water is it clear to you okay students so this was about the physical properties with regard to dinitrogen now i shall be reading these properties from the ncert as well so see over here <clears throat> dinitrogen is colorless odorless tasteless and non toxic gas nitrogen atom has two stable isotopes this i have already told you in the previous lecture what were the two stable isotopes it is basically isotopes are the one which have the same atomic number but the mass number is different atomic number is same but the mass number is different right it has a very low solubility in water i already told you and it has a low freezing and the boiling points so right is it clear to you now students we are going to start with the chemical properties we are going to start with the chemical properties with respect to dinitrogen the chemical properties of n2 now this i guess this you all are aware that it is inert at room temperature now this we have already done that ni dinitrogen contains triple bond between them and why it is inert in nature that means why it is less reactive because over here the bond dissociation energy if you remember the previous lecture i told you this thing that bond dissociation energy over here is very high it was about 941.4 kJ per mole if you remember it if you remember it it was 941.4 kJ per mole in the previous lecture i told you that they have a very large bond dissociation energy that means to break this triple bond we need a lot of energy so they are inert in nature okay you can see dinitrogen is rather inert at room temperature because of the high bond enthalpy of nitrogen nitrogen bond now reactivity however increases rapidly with increase in temperature so as soon as now what happens see i have told you they are inert that means they are less reactive in order to make them reactive in order to make them making bond you have to give a very high amount of energy understand this concept i said you they are inert at room temperature that means they are very less reactive in order to make them reactive you have to provide a lot of temperature a lot of temperature now when you will be providing a lot of temperature what kind of reactions can be performed see they are saying at higher temperature it directly combines with some metals example let me tell you for example it combines with lithium like this at high temperature do remember at low temperature they will become inert at low temperature they are inert they are less reactive because the bond dissociation energy is more so in order to make them reactive you have to give them high temperature for example when you give them high temperature it will react with metals for example it is reacting with lithium forming what lithium nitride what it will form it will form lithium nitride similarly it can also react with magnesium forming magnesium nitride yes mg plus m2 mg3 n2 forming magnesium nitride so basically what is happening over here these nitrides which are being formed over here are ionic nitrides 
these are ionic nitrides that are being formed and they are being formed at a high temperature do not forget this thing at low temperature it will not react they are inert but at high temperature it can react so this is what is written over here at higher temperature it directly combines with the some metals to form predominantly ionic nitrides and with non metals it will form covalent nitrides with metals it is forming ionic nitrides but with non metal it forms covalent nitride it is it clear to you okay so uh, in this only when we do the, its reactivity with non metals okay as well so we can say over here that what happens when n2 basically reacts with o2 what it will form when n2 reacts with o2 it forms the no that is nitric oxide that is what that is nitric oxide so basically this is the reaction now this reaction is performed at a very high temperature a very high a very high temperature it is being performed near about students 2000 kelvin this temperature is being performed at this particular temperature and it is endothermic in nature do remember this thing so this is also one of the most important chemical property i would say this is what this is an endothermic reaction okay students now let us read these concepts also from ncert in order to make it more clear hmm. now let us see from the ncert what does ncert says over here see the reaction they have shown you with li it when it reacts it will form what it will form li3n it will form li3n with magnesium here comma will come with magnesium it reacts forming mg3n2 now it combines with hydrogen at about 773 in the presence now this is also one reaction that is haber's process that is haber's process that is the production of ammonia when n2 reacts with h2 it forms nh3 it gives nh3 it gives ammonia okay so now dinitrogen can also react with dioxygen the reaction i have already told you forming no it will form no and nitric oxide will be formed but only at a higher temperature i already told you the temperature is about 2000 kelvin yes my dear students okay now comes our next part over here that is about the uses let us read the uses over here the main use of dinitrogen now this is from ncert uses you have to do from ncert only the main use of dinitrogen is the manufacture of ammonia you can prepare ammonia and other industrial chemical containing nitrogen example calcium cyanamide now calcium cyanamide basically is cacn2 it is cacn2 which is used as the fertilizer students okay now it is also find use where an inert atmosphere is required now it is used in an inert atmosphere also liquid dinitrogen is used as a refrigerant to preserve biological material food items and in cryo surgery so these are the uses that you need to you know just remember nothing else over here so this ends our dinitrogen topic that is the very first compound with regard to the nitrogen now comes the next compound that is ammonia if i talk about ammonia now first of all we shall be seeing the methods of preparation first of all we shall be seeing the methods of preparation now ammonia students basically is written as nh3 you all are aware of this thing right now when i talk about the method of preparation ammonia can be obtained basically from urea how when urea reacts with water now what is the formula of urea basically it is nh2co nh2 this is urea this is urea when urea reacts with water what will happen over here directly ammonia will not be formed first of all ammonium carbonate will form over here what will happen ammonium carbonate that is nh4 twice co3 will be formed and when heated this when heated this ammonium carbonate what will happen over here ammonia will be formed this is the kind of reaction like this okay when heated ammonia will be formed co2 will be formed water will be formed over here so this is the production of ammonia with the very first process that we can do over here now in the next method of preparation we can directly say that in order to form ammonia what we can do is we can react ammonium salts with some bases so the next reaction over here you can open up your ncrts and you can mark over there also there is no problem but i want you all to write the reactions along with me so that it will be easy for you to learn it out now as i said we will be taking ammonium salt that is nh4cl let us take an ammonium salt and we react it some with some certain base let us say we are reacting with it calcium hydroxide that is caoh twice now when i do so what i will be obtaining i will be obtaining cacl2 i will be obtaining ammonia i will be obtaining what water 
So this is my next method of preparation in order to form ammonia. Similarly, as I've taken CaOH twice over here, you can also take NaOH and you can do this particular reaction and you can see the production of ammonia. Now, this was the very easiest manner I would say. Now comes if they ask you the industrial preparation of ammonia. This is very important. If they ask you, if they ask you the industrial preparation, how to prepare ammonia industrially? This is a quite, you know, important key point that you need to remember. Just right uh, now, we have read that the Born-Haber's process. That means when N2 dinitrogen reacts with H2, it will form ammonia. It will form ammonia. It will form NH3. Now, let me tell you one thing, students. This reaction is basically exothermic in nature. There are certain key points that you need to remember while studying this reaction. This is Born-Haber process, the production of ammonia. It is industrial preparation. As you can see, this, this is a sign over here. This sign indicates that the uh, reactants are being converted into, to the product and product also have a tendency to convert back into the reactant, right? Now, we want the production of ammonia. That means if it is being formed, that we don't need it to convert into reactant again we want only our product ammonia but what is happening over here reactant is being converted into product and product again can be converted but we need to stop this reaction over here only so that the reversible reaction will not yet start it should stop in order to proceed reaction to the forward direction we apply pressure according to the lee chartier's principle so in order in order to obtain a forward reaction in order to obtain a forward reaction, we need to apply high pressure, apply high pressure and low temperature according to, according to Lee Chatelier principle, according to Lee Chatelier principle in order to form, in order to form ammonia. In order to form ammonia, we need to give very high pressure and a very low temperature. Now, pressure that is that is basically applied over here, it is almost about 200 atm pressure that is being applied over here in order to obtain ammonia. And temperature is very low, near about 700 Kelvin is applied over here. So, this question is generally asked, what are the conditions for the production of ammonia industrially? So, you should say that high pressure and low temperature is the condition. Other than this, students, initially when we used to study in the previous class, classes we used to say that the catalyst used over here is iron and basically the promoter over here uses molybdenum but now what we do we use catalyst as an iron oxide with some amount of we use over here iron oxide with small amount of k2o okay we can use this small amount and we can use it as a catalyst and al2o3 so, this is basically the production of ammonia industrially. Now, what kind of question is generally asked? I have already told you. They will be asking you what are the conditions. So, condition is high pressure and low temperature. Do remember this thing. Okay. Now, students, comes our next, uh, next thing that is the physical properties with regard to this. The physical properties that it is colorless gas. Again, if I talk about ammonia, it is a colorless gas. But over here, when I talk about its smell, no, it is not odorless. It has a pungent smell. It has a pungent smell. Like we said in the previous one in the dinitrogen that it has it is odorless, it is tasteless, but it is it has a pungent smell, some kind of okay. In the dinitrogen, I told you it has a very low freezing point and boiling point, but over here in case of ammonia, it has a higher melting point and boiling point. Do remember this. It has a higher melting point and boiling point. Why it happens? Because over here hydrogen bonding is seen, that's why. Higher melting point and boiling point is seen because due to the presence of hydrogen bond, it is associated with the presence of hydrogen bond. Associated with hydrogen bonds. Is it clear to you students? Now, other than this, we can say that in water, it forms basically NH4OH. In water, when ammonia react, it forms NH4OH. Now, you can also write the reaction if you want to. So, what happens when ammonia reacts with water, it forms what? It forms NH4OH. 
So this is the reaction which is ammonium ion is obtained basically NH4OH is what? NH4 positive ammonium ion and OH negative. So ammonium ion is obtained when ammonia reacts with water. And also one more thing, ammonia can be easily liquefied. This is also one of the property, it can be easily liquefied. It can be easily liquefied. It can be easily liquefied. So, these are the physical properties with respect to ammonia, my dear students. Now comes the next topic. Before moving on to the chemical properties, we shall study about the structure of ammonia. Before moving on to the chemical properties, let us see the structure. The, again, you have done this thing. I have already told you. Ammonia basically will have a pyramidal shape. It has a lone pair of electrons and three bond pair with hydrogen. The bond angle is 107 degree. Why? Because there is a repulsion. Lone pair, lone pair, uh, lone pair, bond pair repulsion and bond pair, bond pair repulsion. Right? So, the shape over here changes to pyramidal. This thing we have already done. So, I am writing it all over here again. Pyramidal shape. Hybridization is sp3. Why? Because over here three bond pair are present and one lone pair is present. Right? We have already done its structure. So again we have summed up. Now come students. Uh, let us see. The next is NCRT reading with respect to ammonia physical properties. Now uh, over here ammonia is a colorless gas with a pungent odor. Right? Its freezing point and boiling point order are this much which are high in comparison to dinitrogen. In the solid and liquid state it is associated with hydrogen bonds as I have already told you due to which it has a higher melting and boiling point. Clear? Then expected on the basis of molecular mass. They will have high because they have hydrogen bond. The ammonia molecule is trigonal pyramidal with the uh, nitrogen atom at the apex. Okay? It has three bond pairs and one lone pair of electrons as shown in the structure which I have already made for you people. Great. Now students comes the chemical properties. Now if I talk about ammonia, ammonia basically act as a Lewis space. The very first thing is it act as a it act as a Lewis base. When I talk about ammonia, it act as a Lewis base. Now, what are Lewis base? Lewis base are electron pair donor. In short, I can say Lewis base are electron pair donor. So, there are certain reactions that you need to remember over here is that when ammonia reacts with HCl, the very first thing is when ammonia reacts with HCl, it will act as a Lewis base forming what? NH4Cl. Forming what? NH4Cl. Now, again, if you say that ammonia, if it reacts with H2SO4, now the next reaction which exhibits that it is basically acting as a Lewis base, here NH4 twice, SO4 will be formed. So, these are the reaction when they will ask you that it acts as a Lewis base, so you can write it down over there. Is it clear to you? One more thing that you need to know is that ammonia acts as a weak base. It acts as a weak base as well. It act as a weak base as well. Now, how it will act as a weak base? When it reacts with, you know, uh, when it shows and uh, it acts as a weak base, it does the double displacement reaction. For example, if I say FeCl3, when react with the ammonium, like NH4OH. Now, what happens over here? Double displacement reaction occurs over here and a brown PPT is obtained. Now, what is the brown PPT that is obtained? Fe2O3.xH2O. A brown PPT is obtained over here and this is a kind of a double displacement reaction that is being exhibited over here. Moreover, NH4Cl is being released. Moreover, NH4Cl is being released. Now, this is a kind of where we can say that uh, what happens? It is doing a double displacement reaction. Is it clear to you? Is it clear to you? Now, one more thing. Uh, in ammonia, we have lone pair of electrons. We know that. Lone pair of electrons helps in making coordinate compounds or the coordinate bonds. I Coordinate compounds or coordinate bonds, you can say. What happened? Now, what are the coordinate compounds? We have a particular chapter on that. So, lone pair of electron basically helps in doing that. How we can say is, let us say that Cu plus 2, when it reacts with ammonia, that is NH3, what will happen? Ammonia in its aqueous form, it will form a blue color coordinate compound over here. It will form a blue color coordinate compound. Now, what is the coordinate compound? Again, the central metal is what? It is Cu, then is NH3, 4 and it will have a plus 2 charge. 
So this is basically what is the coordinate compound that is the blue color compound is obtained. So the lone pair of electrons help in forming the coordinate compound. Is it clear to you? I guess this is clear to you students. Right. Now let us see the uses for them. But first of all write it down. Yes. First of all write it down my dear students. Kindly write it down so that we can move on to our next part. Okay, students, now comes the uses. Let us see what are the uses. Ammonia is used to prepare various nitrogenous fertilizers. For example, ammonium nitrate, urea, ammonium phosphate, ammonium sulfate and in the manufacture of some inorganic nitrogen compounds as well. The most important one is being nitric acid which we shall be studying also in detail. Okay, so liquid ammonia is also used as a refrigerant. So these are the uses. Uses again I am saying you have to read just from NCRT. Now students, uh, the last compound is nitric acid which we shall be doing in our next lecture. Okay, so we end our lecture over here. Now there are some certain questions for your today's homework. So the very first question as a homework for today's will be Nitrogen forms stable N2 molecule but phosphorus is converted to P4 from P2 because you have to tell your answer. Next is question number 2 as a homework. Nitrogen can form only one chloride with chlorine which is NCl3 whereas phosphorus can form PCl3 and PCl5. This is due to you have to tell the certain reasons. Great. Now comes question number 3. Which nitrogen trihalide is least basic? I have told you the basic character order. So you have to tell which is least basic. Question fourth is the least stable hydride of the 15th group element is. Now hydride I have already told you you have to tell over here. Question number 5 is, which of the following exhibits the highest solubility in water? So, you have to tell it. You have been given the hydrides over here. Right? So, students, what is your homework for today? The homework for today is to solve practice sheet. Now, I will say some of the topics of in the practice sheet are with respect to phosphorus, phosphorus also. So, don't worry about it. We will be doing in the next lecture. Don't worry. The topics that we have covered, you have to solve that questions. Okay. Second over here is solve questions given in lecture. And the third is read NCRT. Read your NCRT. So, students, this is your homework for today that you have to do over here. Okay. Yes. So now students, this ends our today's session. Tomorrow we shall be finishing, I mean in next lecture we shall be covering our group 15 and group number 16 also almost we will be completing over in the next lecture. So what I want from you all is to solve your questions, read your NCRT and do revise the topics that we are doing in a class. So before ending I would say uh, some lines for you all. The same boiling water that softens the potato. The same boiling water that softens the potato hardens the egg. So, it's what you are made of, not the circumstances. So, in life, whenever you face a difficult circumstances or you are in a bad phase of life, do remember that you are more than enough. Okay, you are sufficient. You just have to make yourself realize that you have to achieve something. So, you have to go through that phase. That phase is basically in your life to teach you something. If you are going through a very bad phase or if you are not able to solve something, that means God is letting you know that you have to learn something from this situation and you have to come out. So, you are enough students and no circumstances can break you down. Whether you are feeling afraid that your exams are approaching and you are not able to solve the questions, you are not able to understand the topic, just calm your mind and say that I will do it if I want to do it. Either you waste your time just thinking it about it or you just try to solve it and understand it. It depends upon only your thinking, right? So now we shall meet in the next lecture. Till then, keep smiling, keep learning. Thank you so much and have a good day.